listening to WAPI. I'm Donna Francavilla filling in for Richard Dixon. And, Charles, that music was being played for you, not for me. <laughs> I, uh, uh, Charles Barkley is joining us. And, and uh, Charles, are you excited about this upcoming season? I am. We're picked to win the national championship. I'm very excited. Uh, you know, most people have picked us to win the national championship. I think. Yeah, you know, Alabama's going to have a good team. They've got a great coach and great tradition. But we're picked to win the national championship, and that excites me more than anything. Well, do you go to all the games, or do you just you just watch them from afar generally? How many games four, do you go, I go to? to? Four games. Oh, that's I go good. Four, I go to four games a year. That's it. And do you, uh, you get to know the players and the no, coaches no, and everything? Out of, this is their time. It's not my time. I go down there to see some of my old teammates. I go to check on the basketball program, and that's it. Uh, but I don't interfere with the program at all. It's their program. I had my time down at Auburn. Do you do anything with the team to support them? Uh, do I support them? Mm-hmm. I just gave them another million dollars. I think that, that counts. Yeah, counts. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gave them a million dollars <laughs> a few years ago. I just gave them another million dollars. That's pretty much. I mean, I won't always support Auburn. It's a wonderful place. It gave me an opportunity to be successful. Uh, I love Bruce Pearl, what he's doing with the basketball program, him and Chuck Person and those guys. Mm-hmm. But obviously our football program is the linchpin uh, of the program. Mm-hmm. And Gus is doing a fantastic job. Uh, I got a relative uh, coach, a friend of mine, Rodney Garner, who's uh, on the coaching staff. But I'm really excited about the season. But I stay out of it. I go down as a fan. But I go down to four games a year. Uh, obviously I'm going to the Iron Bowl. I haven't decided – I not just thinking I won't be able to go to the first game down in Atlanta because doctor don't want me around a bunch of people moving me around. That'd be right out of six weeks of my uh, hip replacement. I'd just be getting um. off my walker, but I'll be watching. But I'm, I, I'm I just want Auburn to do well. It's just a great place, and I'm gonna do anything I can to help them be successful. A couple of other questions I've got for you. Someone on Facebook said I've got to ask you this question: Are you still thinking about running for governor? No, no, you know, Donna, I, I, this politician, the political stuff is just so stupid between the Republicans and the Democrats arguing all over the time, and the only people who really get screwed is the people. I wish they would kill both parties and uh, let, you, let the person, <laughs> I would. I hate, you know, when people, and I hate, you know, they throw the terms around conservative and liberal just right, to make right. you choose a team. I hate that. I think it's silly and stupid. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would love the person. Uh, I would, would. I would. I wish they would kill the political parties and stop doing the, the conservative and the liberal terms out there just to make you uh, divide and conquer. You ask me a question on any subject, I'll give you an answer, uh, and it just drives me crazy the way they get these these people out here just arguing with each other over stuff that's silly. You know, there's very few things that I'm gonna argue over. Everything ain't worth arguing over. You know, you ask me a question, I'm going to give you an answer, and you're going to like the answer or you're not. Do you, uh, uh, Donna Francavilla talking to Charles Barkley, do you think that you would ever run for president? I mean, Donald Trump's doing it. You have a no, lot of popularity. I, I, you have a great following. I mean, you know, why not? Yeah, but I don't want to be working at this stage of my life. Anybody, and I say this all the time, and people get mad. If you're working past 60, you needed a better job. Uh, you know, I think I'm going to work another, uh, right now I'm going to work another, uh, eight years till I'm 60, and that's going to be it for me. I'm not working past 60. Now, didn't you say that about five years ago? I did. I mean, you know, I just signed my new deal. And they asked me, talked about uh, working, and I and I was going to retire. And they gave me a lot more responsibility. They gave me some shows on CNN to talk about education, Reese, and things like that. Uh, so that's the number one thing that I want to work on the next eight years. Uh, so I'm gonna work until I'm 60. I have an obligation. I have a, a not an obligation. I have an opportunity opportunity to walk away anytime I want to. Uh, but nice. I sign my contract up till I'm 60, and I'm 52 now. All right, let's talk a little bit about politics. So you've been sitting in a in a recovery bed for a few weeks now, uh-huh. and, or at least a week now. And and you've been watching what's going on on the national scene. And what is your opinion about the the parties, about the politics, about the candidates? Is there do you, is there one that you are pulling for? You know, I always vote Democratic, uh, to be honest with you, Donna. But there's not really a candidate right now that's really floating my boat. Um, I like Hillary Clinton, but she doesn't do that for me. Um, so uh, I haven't made a decision. 
uh, right now, if I had to vote, I'd probably vote for Jed Bush. That'd be the first time I ever voted Republican. Mm. I like him because I think he's not like a typical Republican who just want to divide and conquer. You know, I think, uh, you know, he understands, uh, like, we're all in this thing together. He's, he did a good job as governor of Florida. You know, I think his dad his dad was a underrated president. I wasn't a big fan of his brother's. Um, you know, because I think if you get caught up in the, like, divide and conquer, that's what this thing is really about. You just try to divide the people and conquer. Because there's very few people who really doesn't matter who the president is. Let's be realistic. You know, you just got to get trick a few people into voting one way or the other, and they choose to divide and conquer. But let, let's be realistic, Donna. I, I, who the president is not going to have a big effect upon my life. Really? Uh, and most, now, are yeah. you are you going to uh, contribute to any political campaigns? Uh, yeah, I'll probably always could. Whoever I vote for, I'm gonna put, uh, give them some cash. I mean, but I'm not gonna go overboard. But like I say, it does. It's not gonna. Like I love President Obama, but but I thought his his message was a bigger picture to all these young black guys out there who are wasting their lives, get involved up in the judicial system, that you can be successful through academics and don't have to play sports and be an entertainer and things like that. I thought that was the biggest picture. And I think when it, when history looks back, you know, they've been on this case for all these years since he's been president, these conservatives, whatever that means. You know, they ain't giving him a hard time. But if you look at the things he's done since he's been in office, I think he's done an amazing job, amazing job. Um, uh, uh, but, you, like, go but, ahead. but there's a large segment of the population that's very angry with him. Yeah, those are called white people. They're <laughs> never going to like him because he's black. I mean, there's, there's always going to be like that. You really I, think it comes down to color? Of course it does. A lot of it does. Of course it does. But, it, well, you know, not, and maybe I shouldn't say that, but uh, there's a lot of that out there, as we see. There's a lot of there's a lot of racism out there. But also, I think some people are just so selfish, they want every verdict to go their way, every vote to go their way. Like, he's the president of the United States. He has to take care of everybody. He can't make a ruling. Every ruling is not going to go your way. You have to step back and look at the big picture. Uh, and the big picture is the guy, the economy has been fantastic. I think uh, Obamacare has gave a lot of people who didn't have, I mean, you know, if people don't worry about health benefits until they need them. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. But I think the guy's done a fantastic job. What is it in particular that you think uh, he will be remembered for that you think he did well? Well, I think it's important for black men to know that you can be successful academically. That's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing. Is That's it, the biggest thing. Because, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, they brainwash all our kids to think they can only be successful through athletics and entertainment. Mm-hmm. We can be doctors, lawyers, engineers, something that I've been saying for 20 years. You know, you don't have to be able to dunk a basketball, uh, be able to run for a 1,000 yards to make millions of dollars. You can be a doctor, lawyer, engineer, teacher, fireman, policeman, things like that. And I think sometimes we as black people, we miss that boat. Uh, so that's the number one thing, that let, let our kids know they can be successful uh, athletically. Who do you feel that the black community is behind in this not, election? We're not behind anybody right now. I, I don't think Hillary has that effect on us like President Clinton did. Uh, is it because don't. she's not cool enough, you think? Uh, no, no, uh, no. I don't think it's not that she's cool enough. I just think that she doesn't have the charisma factor mm-hmm. working right now. Yeah. yeah and I like her. I like her, but she doesn't like, you know, like, there's certain candidates I've been with, like, I go through a wall with that guy. Like, President Obama, President Clinton, if they told me to do anything, I'd do it probably more than likely. Uh, but, you know, it. She doesn't, like I said, I love Elizabeth Warren. I would love Elizabeth Warren to be running. Uh, her and the mayor of uh, San Antonio, they would be my preferences if I could pick two candidates on my own. Hmm. Uh, I like both of those candidates a lot. But like I say, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. they got 20 guys and girls in a Republican field, and I've never voted Republican. I like Jeb Bush. I've always liked Jeb Bush. I've always liked Chris Christie. Uh, but this thing is going to be very interesting. Uh, but like I say, right now I don't think Hillary can win, And uh, to be honest with you. 
you know, I was, I've been tracking the Joe Biden story. It's actually unfolding today. And, yeah. and some are saying that he's not going to run. Some saying he is going to run. What's your view of how he'd do if he ran? I think he's too old to run, to be honest with you. Hmm. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. Um, how old is he? he uh, I don't know the exact number right offhand. But, you know, I said this a few years ago when Bob Doe was running. Bob Doe was the same age as my grandmother. Yeah. And I don't want my grandmother running. <laughs> uh, just have, uh, but Ronald Reagan was older when he ran. Uh, yeah, but uh, he wasn't my guy. But uh, he had hair, so yeah. that made him look younger. <laughs> yeah, uh, and good makeup artists coming with him from Hollywood. That's right. Uh, but I don't. Uh, I and think a younger I, wife. Yeah, how old is Biden? I, I'd be curious to know the answer to that. But, but in my personal opinion, maybe he just look older. Uh, yeah, maybe I, he does because he's white haired now and he's losing yeah. some hair. He just, yeah, you're right. He looks older, but he yeah, may he not be. Well, maybe he's not as old as I think he is. But like I say, my preference would be seventy two years old. Yeah, I don't want a seventy five year old president. I don't want that. You know, I mean, I mean, he'd be, uh, you know, how, however how old he is now. You say seventy two. He'd be at least seventy five, six, seventy six, seventy seven when he's president. I don't want a president that old. To be honest with you, that's just my personal presence. presence. So when when you donate to a, a PAC or you t- to a candidate, do you have any expectation of anything? In other words, no. do you... No, my candidate does not have to win. I just think you can't force your opinion if you're not involved in the process. You know, and one of my jobs is I get to go on all these shows and talk about things like this. So I can't be a hypocrite and, like, talk about, I don't like this guy, I don't like this guy, if I haven't put, you know, put a little, a little a couple chips in the fight. You know, all the, you know, a lot of these people, you know, they bitch and complain about politics, but they've never voted or they don't vote. So you can't, you need to shut the hell up if you don't vote. Now, if you vote, that's a totally different animal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What would you like to see changed? I mean, you deal with people at a very large scale. I mean, you're 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 up there with the movers and shakers. Yeah. In places that the average American isn't, and you see things from a different perspective. What needs to change, and what can be changed? Well, I think my number one thing and my number one goal is is I want to help as many poor people become successful as possible. Uh, that's the most important. That's the most important thing. I mean, I, you know, and I've said that from the last 20 years. My number one priority is to help as many poor people become successful as possible. Mm. And uh, I'm going to keep doing I'm going to keep doing that because they but listen, most of these people are not in the game. They're not in the game. Uh, they can go and work as hard as they want to, but they're not technically in the game. Right. And my goal is to get as many of them as possible in the game. Mhm. Mhm. And so to that end, you've donated some money and you've tried to help. Do you want to talk sure. about that for a minute? I don't like talking about it, but if you want to talk about it, I mean, uh, I think most people know that uh, I gave Auburn a million dollars a few years ago. I gave my high school and I gave uh, Cornerstone in Birmingham because I want to help as many uh, underprivileged kids go to uh, college as possible. Because I think if you go to college, that gives you a chance to be successful. And I think, uh, you know, recently I just gave Auburn another million. I gave uh, Wounded Warriors a million, and I gave Morehouse in Atlanta a million. Uh, that's important for me. And also I, I, I had told uh, the mayor of Birmingham, who I really like, Mayor Bell, I was giving $250,000 to, uh, to Chief Roper for body cameras for the guys and also the chief in Leeds, Coach, uh, Chief Jackson. I was going to give each one of them $250,000 for body cameras. Because mm-hmm. uh, I think the cops are under siege a little bit unfairly. And I had talked to the mayor uh, last time I was home, and I told him I want to do something for Chief Roper. And I met with uh, Chief Jackson in Leeds, because I would never do anything for Birmingham I wouldn't do for Leeds, because Leeds is my home. Even though I, you know most people affiliate me with the Birmingham area, I'm from Leeds. So that's my thing, man. I'm going to give away. I'm not going to give it all away. But I want to help as many people become successful as I possibly can. And that's one of many reasons why I think the Birmingham community really appreciates you and looks up to you. And, Some of them, and a- Donna. Some of them. But I don't care about what everybody else thinks. That's the good thing about being the king. You don't have to really worry about what everybody <laughs> else thinks. You know, I ain't worried about getting fired. If I got fired tomorrow, that's give me more days to play golf and fish. <laughs> you know, I've done very good things in my life. I've been very blessed. And, but the number one thing I want to do, I want to help as many people as I can become successful, plain and simple. And that is leaving a legacy, which is a really important thing to do. I'm getting the, I've got to take a break, 
uh, sim- sign from my producer. So I've got to take a break. And Charles, we, we're going to talk to you straight up to four o'clock, aren't we? Uh, right, how much time is that? That's like ten minutes. All right. Can we I'll talk to you? On. Okay, I'll stay on. All right, I appreciate that. And okay, by babe. the way, at four o'clock, we're having your friend uh, Mayor William Bell join us uh, for half an hour. So. I, uh, you know, that, yes, that, if you want to listen, you, you're more than welcome to, to keep listening. I appreciate um, it, baby. All right. All right. I'll be waiting. All right. You're listening to WAPI 1070 AM. You're listening to Richard Dixon. Richard Dixon. 